Okay, and I am back again for my second cast of the night. I am Quincy191 once again, and I do not have a co-caster because my friends have abandoned me and I'm feeling sad. Uh, in any case, this is game three of the NASL show matches between Complexity and EZ. First two games are uploaded to my channel if you would like to watch them. The first game I had some issues with video editing, so it may not be that pretty to watch, but I, it's, it is viewable. Uh, the second game, I fixed those problems. It is a still a little dark. Apparently there's some stupid gamma setting that I have to fix in order to make sure it works better, and I really do not understand it or have the wherewithal to fix some, what is really a minor problem. I mean, it's kind of dark and you can't see the minimap that well, but it's, it's certainly watchable. Uh, in any case, we've had two very good games so far, and we've seen some dominant play from some heroes and some players, and I'm not going to say who's who, because I don't want to ruin things. If you want to watch the games, then watch the games, and I won't introduce any spoilers here. Uh, in any case, the banning start pa stage of this game three has begun. So far, uh, we have Silhouette, Wild Soul, Zephyr, Nymphora, Ophelia, Jerezaya, and Ra. Ra banned for the third game in a row, as well as Silhouette and Wild Soul. It's not particularly surprising. Ra and Silhouette and Wild Soul are very, very strong heroes. See Zephyr banned for the first time three games. Of course, the first game was picked up by Toronto. The second game was picked up by Sibuska. Uh, both of them played very well with Zephyr, and that probably has informed these bans here. Ophelia banned once again. She was banned last game. Uh, again, I don't think there are too many strong Ophelia players in this game, but uh, very strong hero in general. Um, Nymphora picked up uh, last game by Complexity, and banned in this game, possibly as response, I... Uh, no, actually. Complexity banned Nymphora. And they were the ones who played it last time. Anyway, Plague Rider be last ban, of course. Uh, not too much that's crazy going on here. Strong... Strong heroes all bane here, some carries in Zephyr, uh, Silhouette, Wild Soul, and Raw. Strong support players in Nymphora and Ophelia. Uh, I call Jerezai a support or a carry. That's really up to you, because he can fill both of those roles. Of course, uh, Plague Rider has strong lane presence with that extinguishability, the ability to really keep the lane pushed up the tower, deny a lot of experience, very, uh, very common here to see. Uh, Torture banned. I no, actually, I don't think he was banned last game, but he was not picked up. Um, this game, he was picked up in game one, and he's going to go back to easy. No, he was picked up by yeah, he was picked up by easy in game one. Yeah, so he's going back to easy in here in game three as the first pick for the Legion side. The Hellborn side currently soft picking Polywog Priest and Tempest. Yeah, Tempest and Polywog Priest are going to be their picks, Polywog and Priest. both those heroes were played by the uh, by complexity. Last game to great effect. Uh, other than that, not too much to say. Uh, not really uh, any surprising picks coming out, of course, so far. Poly, Tempest, and Torch were all very, very common heroes. Of course, Tempest for his ultimate, Torture for his all around AoE ability is very, very good in team fights, which the uh, compared to metagame, is, and really this game in general, is based around if you can't win team fights, it's unlikely you're going to win the game. Uh, Pollock Priest, of course, uh, much in the same manner. Excellent CC with his Hex and Tongue Tide abilities. Excellent tower pushing in team fights. Uh, strength with the wards coming out. And of course, the Electric Tolt. Fun little nuke. Very strong in the early game. Uh, Hellbringer actually being soft picked, I and mean, he has not banned this game. And that's interesting. He was banned last game. He's got obviously probably the strongest ultimate in the game. The superior magic stun coming out. Of course, Malphus coming into play with his uh, AOE damage, his fire breath, and his general tankiness and damage. Always a very strong summon. And of course, really Hellbringer uh, has. We always talk about the ultimate, but he's got abilities beyond that. His death oil is very strong. Early game does a lot of dot damage. Um, and Life Void can keep him alive for an extremely long amount of time. And there goes the Hellbringer pick, accompanied by Bubbles. Of course, we saw him play by Easy in the last game. Uh, and he's also a very good hero. He's got the take cover, gives him survivability, shell surf, even more of that. And the ultimate, if placed correctly, can do a crazy amount of work for you in a team fight. Of course, that was a three-second stun, I believe, if you 
uh, leave the ultimate. Doesn't do too much damage, but there's a mini stun upon laying it down. There's a stun when you try to leave it, so it really forces heroes to stay in place. Um, could, be, could work as a good counter to Tempest because, of course, Bubbles has a strong ability to stay out of the Tempest ult and then use the mini stun on the ultimate to cancel his ult. Um, so probably a counter effect to Tempest there, as they were on opposing teams last time as well. But um, lots of AoE presence coming out here from the Legion side so far. Torture, of course, all of his abilities pretty much are AoE. Um, Bubbles, same deal except for Take Cover. Hellbringer, his dip boil spreads, as well as his Alice, obviously his ultimate. Uh, so they are looking quite strong in team fights here, and the same can be said for the Legion side with the Polymer Priest and Tempest Damn Ultimates. Hero. And there you go, the first non-hero uh, team fight hero, Tundra, very single target damage. Andromeda. Andromeda, same deal. And actually that's Andromeda's a great pickup to uh, keep that Tempest, you know, in the game. Andromeda's a strong, very strong counter to Tempest, because as we saw in game one, the swap cancels the ultimate and it's superior magic, so uh, Shrunken Head will not prevent the Andro swap from taking Tempest out of his ultimate. I was used to great effect in game one to prevent Tempest from getting any strong ultimates off. So put two, those two heroes on the same team means that it's going to be a lot harder for uh, Legion to cancel Tempest ultimate. Of course, the superior magic damage coming out from Hellbringer uh, on the Malphus will cancel the Tempest ultimate because it will go through Shrunken Head and it's a stun. So that could be their thinking there. They've got you know, certainly plenty of ways to cancel the Tempest ultimate. Got three stuns on the uh, Hellbringer. Parasite. And Parasite, another single target hero. So now they've apparently picked up all their AoE stuff, Mage and Mage Bane is the carry. Uh, Parasite is seen fairly often in the competitive scene, of course, because there's a lot of uh, jungle strategies going on right now, and Parasite's an excellent jungler, and in particular a strong anti-jungler. Because he has the ability to infest creeps and deny them, he can really go into the other team's jungle if they have a jungler and screw with their farm by taking over and killing himself, a creep that the other players are just about to kill, and, and that will really mess with uh, a jungler's ability to farm that jungle. And beyond that, he's got excellent burst damage with his ultimate and his... Um, which uh, steals buffs, of, of course, you know, things like haste and double damage. Um, and his leech, which steals uh, movement speed, so it slows you and makes him faster, so he's a great chaser in that regard. Uh, plenty of ways to build him. My personal preference is Codex, because the amount of burst damage you get, you can just insta-kill somebody. A lot of competitive scene likes to build Puzzle Box. Um, also a very strong item, obviously. Um, anyway, we've got the last pick coming on the Hellboard side, and his Puppet Master is going to play it by Sebuska. Um, Puppet Master is, in my opinion, not a great hero. They really kind of nerfed his ultimate, and he's just, he's not survivable enough anymore. He, he doesn't live long enough to put his uh, damage out. He can do a lot of damage if he gets the opportunity, but he just doesn't get it. He's got two strong disables in the hold and the, um, I don't know what it's called, but makes you attack other heroes. I can't, remember, can't believe I forgot the name of that. Um, so for a ranged carry, you know, that's that's a lot of disable. That's that's something that's not really met by other heroes. And it doesn't seem to matter though, because it does disable the other team for quite a while, but he's still so squishy that he just he just gets taken out super quickly. Now if he does get farm, he can be one of the hardest carries in the game. So there is that. You know, common building him is involves assassin shroud, occasionally rift shards, so you uh, pop popping the ultimate pop in the assassin shroud and with the whiplash proc up you can go in and you can do huge amounts of burst damage coming out of that invisibility um, so that's he's, he's a good ganker and he's obviously a good carry but i'm not a huge fan of him i am a bigger fan of mage being a legion team um, because of a recent buff i don't know how recent it was and since this game is quite old i don't know if it's applicable in this game but he received uh, all melee heroes received plus one uh, health regeneration, which really brought back the melee carry as a viable option. Before that, you really didn't see a lot of melee carries. Um, but now that they actually have the ability to survive in the early game and things like that, then they they can be they can work. And Mage Bane is one of the best because he scales um, like few others. He is one of the very very few you know absolute late game carries like Chronos, like Flint. When they get fully geared up, they can just completely dominate an entire team. Um, and he's got strong early game presence with the blink. It's, he, it makes him incredibly hard to kill unless you have a massive 
amount of CC. But you know, on the other hand, the Elborn does have that. They've got the Andromeda Stone, the two disables from Puppet Master, two disables from Poly or uh, Priest, and Hex and Tundra Tide. Ultimate coming out from uh, Tundra as well as Shiver Vision to make sure they can see where he blinks. And of course, the Sun coming out and the Ultimate from Tempest. So they may be able to keep him locked down. Um, but as always, the Blink is such a great mobility tool, and mobility is such an important part of this game that it's he's really, really one of the strongest carries in the game. It's hard to, to prevent him from getting that farm. Once he gets the farm up, he can absolutely dominate. Um, looking at the laning phase right now, we've got Bubbles and Puppet Master going at it in this top lane. I expect Puppet Master to win this. He's going to have easier ability to last hit with the Whiplash, and Bubbles has strong getaways with the Shell Surf, but Puppet Master has just a strong disable, so I don't imagine that Bubbles will be able to kill Puppet Master unless Puppet Master misplays. Um, and Puppet Master might be able to get a kill or two on Bubbles, but of course Bubbles is very hard to kill with a take number in the Shell Surf. And the Silence for that matter. Uh, in this middle lane we got Torture and Polywog. Torture already throwing a stun out on Polly. And hitting him and some harassment coming out there. Uh, Two guys, I don't really expect to kill each other without ganks, and there may be one being set up here by Andromeda, although no, she's gonna back up. Um, Polywog has Hex, Torture has Stun. Torture's got considerably more damage, but not enough of an ability to lock down Polywog Breeze. His Stun is very difficult to hit, particularly in the early levels when it's quite small, and very easy to um, miss. And of course, this is the competitive games. So the level of everybody's going to be very much higher, so uh, perhaps more reliable stun from Korok, on the other hand, more reliable getaway from uh, Panicold on that Polywalk Priest. So I don't expect a lot of uh, action to come out here, um, unless there's some roaming, and there may be from Andra, who's been moving around the map. Meanwhile, on the bottom, Magebane is chasing down Tundra, and this lane I fully expect to be won by Magebane. Uh, he does have a logger to attach it stout shield. Uh, and trees, Rune of the Light, which is... First of many. <laughs> oh, there you go, and there's the... Uh, sorry, I missed that. First Blood coming out onto Korok with the assistance from Toronto. Pinnacle gets the kill on Polywalk, and that's exactly what I expected. They, they need the assistance to come and kill the other one. There's, there's no way you can get the kill 1v1 unless there's Koros overplay from the other hero. Uh, meanwhile, anyway, in the bottom lane, uh, I love this uh, here build for melee carries. I do it all the time. Uh, a bit formulaic, but there you go. Um, Gives you the survivability with the South Shield, the last ability with the Logger's Hatchet, and of course healing with the runes. And there you go, Mage Bane just grabs his life tube. And uh, Tundra's just not gonna be able to kill the Mage Bane. Um, with with the blink, and Tundra's only got the one stun at level six. That's just not enough damage coming out from Tundra to be able to kill Mage Bane. So I fully expect Mage Bane to win this lane, because he can be more aggressive with the blink. He can go in and not be worried about getting caught out of position because he can just get out really quickly. And you can see that here is just harassing Tundra out of lane. Um, so I, I expect the top lane to be won by the Hellborn, bottom lane by the Legion, and the middle lane to be a push. And that's really where this game is to come down to, I think, whether Torture or Polywog uh, gets the farm. Because in the mid game, uh, both of those heroes can take over and do a lot of damage. Torture is definitely the stronger carry, but uh, Polywog, of course, remains viable through Hex and Tongue Tide and Wards. Uh, possibly some action coming out here on Andro. He's going to look to find that Parasite, who is just running around, probably uh, screwing with Tempest's farm right there. As you can see, he took away the Minotaur. Um, so that's going to be another wild card here, is is Parasite going to be able to deny a farm from Tempest in order to uh, prevent him from getting that early portal key and, to, of course, to keep Parasite's levels up to make him an effective mid-game ganker with all that magic damage that can come out. More uh, pushing coming in from the top lane. We saw this last game where this is going to allow Bubbles to get a uh, much better farm than he normally would because he's got the defense of the tower right there to keep him well up and safe. So that's that's not a good idea, of course, from from the Hellward team. And really, uh, you know, the, the sides have switched, so it, it's now easy on Legion when they were on Hellward last time. But both teams really haven't pulled very much, which is quite surprising because you know the the pull hasn't been awarded, so they can do it. And really, if you stack that pull and uh, and then pull the lane, you can deny an entire wave of experience and uh, keep the lane 
you know, near, the, near your tower where you want it to be, so... I, I don't know why they're not doing that so much. I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm a noob, but... That's certainly the way seem, things seem to me. Um, Mage Bane taking out the Coral right there, uh, but Tundra immediately recasting him. As far as CK goes, uh, the current game leader is Tempest with 34 in the jungle. Not too surprising, he's completely unopposed. But uh, number two is Mage Bane down here at 30 and 18, and 31 and 18, and that's, uh, like I said, you know, he's gonna have his ability to pretty much just free farm this lane because Tundra can't touch him. And speaking of pulls, there's a pull right there coming out. Um, after they stack that camp and even drug the second camp in there, and that's going to basically deny a lot of chance from the Hellborn side. Not as much as I would think, but uh, quite a bit nonetheless. And and you know, that can't be discounted as a factor, particularly in solo lanes. Denying an entire wave of experience is, you know, can be about half a level right there. And that's a lot, especially when this Tundra needs to be level 6 in order to do anything stun-wise to lock down the Mage Bane. Oh, sh and once again, uh, Korok goes down the middle lane to, to Andromeda and Polywog. Looks like a Word Trap came out there. Uh, I got Fort Polywog, and of course if he lands that, Korok is screwed. He's got no escape, me uh, no escape mechanisms and not enough damage to even try to take Polywog in return. Unlikely, that, as that may be, of course. So actually more action uh, happening in the middle lane than I expected. Um, and it's interesting too because there's a ward here from Yoda and another one down here. Uh, so they really have the entrances marked, and these this ward does should spot the room. Um, so you should be able to see if there's uh, and there's a stun coming out of Polywog, and here comes the Sherman Prime Vision, and the parasite's there, and the agonizing bonds. It's Polywog going down here. No, he's gonna live. Random sun coming out from Korok, almost hitting Polywog, but he's going to get away. Excellent play right there. Use, uh, appropriate use of the Hex, and that's rather unfortunate. Now Tempest is going to take over this middle lane and get the farm while well, Polywog isn't here. Agonizing Bond's coming out to harass Torture, uh, Tempest from Torture. Uh, anyway, going back to the farm here, Mage Bane's up to 47 and 24, now actually beating out that Tempest, uh, the Puppet Master, and the Tempest is still laying in more action in the bottom lane as Beatiz goes down on that Hellbringer. And they may be looking to set up a gank here on Mage Bane. There's an ultimate coming out from Tundra, and, uh, and a nuke coming out from Andromeda, as well as the... Aurora, and that will take out Chu, and that's exactly what they need. They need just the massive amount of lockdown. They cannot let him, you know, not be stunned because he will blink away and live. But you know, you gotta wonder why Chu was that far forward. He just saw Beatus got taken out in the jungle, and he knew that there were at least three heroes there because of oh, Tundra and uh, Andromeda and Bubbles. As we see, the tower and I go down the middle, and it looks like there might be some action up here. So they're just they're just waiting for Hellbringer, and there's the Shiver coming out, so they can see exactly where he and Torture are. Stun coming out on uh, Torture, and he's gonna get war trapped, and that's gonna kill him. And they might look to turn around surround onto Hellbringer as well. Swap coming out. No. Uh, Andrew's level five. That's probably not helping. Uh, meanwhile, Chu will take out the Fusca on top. <laughs> Excellent, just barely uh, killing him before they took the last hit of the puppet. So, uh, carry for carry there. Carry taking out carry. That's a good pickup by Chu. Uh, but uh, easy is now 1 and 5, and this isn't looking super good for them. Those two uh, kills, and now three actually, on Korok. Um, allowing Polywog really to take the lead in the middle, and that's I think the primary driver of the lead the Hellborn has right now. Some coming out of Mage Bane, but there's obviously going to be no fallout to that. Uh, yeah, 
you know, like I said, the, the top lane easily won by uh, Hellborn, but Master 53 and 21 compared to a 23 and 6 bubble, so obviously winning there. Bottom lane won by Legion 59 and 25 against the 13 and 2 Tundra, just awful form on Tundra there. Um, but the middle lane was concisively won by Polywog with some help from Andromeda, and that 0 and 3 and 0 Korok on Torturer. And that's really the, the primary driver of the lead right now, I think. Puppet will come back here. It looks like it's going to be a far, uh, carry versus carry. Uh, competing for farm. Meanwhile, Torture is invisible, and that's going to spell death for Polywog because there's bubbles and he's gone. Sorry, Puppet Master, not Polywog Beast. So that's the second kill for EZ, but they still do not have an advantage, and now Bubbles is here to steal experience from Mage Bane, and he needs to stop this and go away. This happens a lot to me. I'm playing a carry in one lane, get a teammate playing a carry in the other lane, and they get crapped on, they come to my lane, try to farm, I'm like, no, that's not how this game works. Meanwhile, Beatus might be looking to get locked down down here. Polywog in the jungle, and Tundra up here in lane, and there's the Coral. And there he is, and he's absolutely screwed. Here comes the Hex, and the Tongue Tide. Nope. Waste of time. Just gonna be the jolt. No reason to even use the Tundra up right there. Meanwhile, I got some group up here on top. Bubbles is still hanging out, and Mage Bane's gonna jump this uh, Puppet Master, but Andresen coming out here on top of the Bubbles. Oh, there's a Puppet Master stun, and it's just Mage Bane ultimate gonna destroy Puppet Master. Tempest ultimate hitting nobody because Mage Bane blinked out already, and Robin is in some trouble. I don't know why he stayed there and channel that ultimate. That made no sense. It's gonna sum Bubbles. That's gonna kill Bubbles. <laughs> just an interesting shell surf and blink right there. <laughs> shell surfed and blinked immediately, which meant that it did no damage to Andro and ended up killing him because it didn't act as a getaway. But uh, interesting that Tempest chose to channel that ult from the pulse check. It's ultimate from Tundra coming out of Hel Helmrayer, and that's going to kill him with a Carl slow. Actually, Andro taking that kill, I believe, with the Aurora. And this top tower is going to go down. destroyed a Legion tower. Uh, anyway, uh, Tempest channeled the ultimate for about three seconds while Andrew was getting beat on by Bubbles and obviously in 1v1 that's in a situation that she's going to win, so you needed some backup. Luckily Bubbles uh, misplayed with the Shell Surf and she didn't end up beating it. But still, interesting decisions from, let's see, Yoda? No, Zaku on Tempest. Sorry, I don't look at the uh, player names that much. Mage main down here. Almost getting taken out. Polywog got a haste rune. And Parasite's infested something. And Korok is just gonna farm these wards. So attempted, I assume, to take out Mage Bane, presumably with the wards and the tongue tied. But too much support coming out here. And uh, of course Mage Bane. He's got his rune cleaver already okay. at 13 seconds. 13 seconds. Uh, meanwhile, Bubble's getting taken out again by a three man gate from Tundra, Andromeda, and Tempest. Uh, anyway, it's like a war trap, some page paint just aren't gonna work, you know, he's got the blink, he's got enough survivability now to uh, survive the tongue tied, so even if you manage to lock him down for a while, it's probably not gonna be enough time. Looks like there's some group up here on bottom. Polywog is coming in from the side. And Mage Bane is just gonna leave and farm these neutrals. But uh 13 minute cleave on uh, Mage Bane, that's excellent. 336 gold per minute on Chu. And that could be a serious problem for the Hellborn team because that's going to allow them to farm incredibly fast. Uh, and like I said, you know, Mage Bane with items is one of the strongest carries in the game, and he's not going to be out carried by Puppet Master. Unless Puppet Master gets absolutely fantastic farm, and at 264 gold per minute, that is not happening. Uh, the, the Hellborn do have Panic Gold on Polywog Breeze and Amex Zaku on Tempest to pick up some of that flak. Uh, Zaku actually out farming the. Mage Bane and Panicold is the third best farmer in the game. Uh, so they're doing doing well, and of course they do have a 6k, 6K gold lead and 4k experience lead. But they really have to be concerned about this Mage Bane because he can run away with things and the Puppet Master is not doing well enough. Agonizing Bone Surround is coming out, causing Puppet Master to pop a health potion. Looks like we have a massive team fight here again, Agonizing Bone's coming out. 
Uh, Sherbar here, going to give some vision of the Hellborns. Or sorry, the Legion Tower. Tempest Minion is also going to do some scouting, take out this creep wave. <laughs> Bubble Shells are actually hitting both Pump Master and Tundra. It's going to cause Pump Master to fall back a little bit because he's really low. And it looks like everybody's going to back off. There's going to be a team fight here after all. But there, you know, there has been strong push coming out from the Hellborn team. They've already taken top of the middle tower, and that's, again, primary driver of the uh, gold advantage, either, either thing being the uh, six kill lead they have. And actually, Legion's going to look to counter push this middle, this bottom tower. They have strong push potential with Torture, and of course, the ultimate um, on Hellbringer. And there's, you know, there's some argument as to whether that's best to use as an initia initiation tool or a counter-initiation tool. You know, having that big old AoE sun come out can help torture set up his thing, or it can cancel the Tempest ultimate. I would imagine it's better used as a, as a cancel for Tempest ult, because if not that, then they're going to have little. Tempest blinking in here, gonna put the sun torturer, and a swap hand on torturer, and that's gonna kill him. Tundra ultimate coming out, and he's down. Bubbles chasing down Polywag here, gets the ultimate down on both Tundra and Polywag Priest. Polywag's coming out, nearly gonna kill Bubbles and uh, force Parasite to come out of his creep. Now they're gonna do some work on the tower, and the tower is actually taking them down. That's a little uncommon now to switch over the Tempest minions, and this tower's gonna go down one way or the other. Meanwhile, Parasite's getting jumped here by four heroes, and he's gonna go down. And they're gonna find B Diz down here in the woods, and he's dead. So that is. Four, three heroes down for the Legion side, none for the Hellborn, and a tower kill, and they're looking right now in much better command of the game, but they still have to be worried about Mage, but he's just sitting on 1600 gold, and he's got 391 farm now, actually looking to take out this middle tower. Um, just absolute, pretty much free farm he's had. And, you know, the, the rest of the Legion team just needs to shuttle this out until they can, until the Mage Bane is ready to participate. And, and can just destroy things. Tempest Mane's coming out in the middle lane, and we've got four heroes here, and they might look to push, but of course the first tier middle tower is down, and they probably don't want to be pushing all the way that far into base yet. Uh, they do seem to have some awareness that Mage Bane's up here, or at least maybe they want some wards, I don't know, they have no vision up there. But of course he's going to be fine because he has Blink, and therefore you can't kill him. Uh, good time to go over some items then. Hellbringer actually sitting on just Rev Wards, Wards of Sight, and a port. Not even boots, power supply, nothing. No stat items. So he's just looking to get his ultimate and his death boil out and get out of there. Uh, Mage Bane picked up his Rune Cleaver very early as we saw. He just bought a Beast Heart. And he's got strong farm, 393 gold per minute, so... I would imagine uh, Helm of Black Legion is his next item. He's already obviously got a Stout Shield already, just waiting for the Life Tube, and he should be able to farm that up relatively quickly with his Rune Cleaver. Uh, Bubbles has got a Ray of the Teacher, Bottle, Boots, Mana Battery, Pretender's Crown, and Port. Uh, fairly standard items under him, of course, is Ring of the Teacher, giving him some extra mana regen. Bubbles, um, and Bottle, sorry, is a very common item. Actually, probably while getting caught by the Bubbles ultimate and getting it taken out there by Parasite, but Tempest ultimate coming out immediately canceled by the Hellbringer ultimate. Tundra ulting Parasite, it's going to take him out. And that was actually interesting, the Bubbles come out, ultimate coming out of Polywell Priest and him popping the Invisi Rune that he just happened to have bottled up and trying to live there but running right into a Revelation Ward. Uh, Mage Bane sees Tundra but can't lock him down quickly enough. And he's going to go straight back to farming. So one for one exchange there. Um, taking Parasite for Polybug Priest. It's not an even trade. Uh, Polybug probably a little more valuable right now. Of course, Parasite's only sitting at 169 gold per minute, while uh, Polybug Priest is 288. And Poly's level 11, while Parasite's level 8. But Poly was dead quickly, and Parasite was more of a revenge kill. So uh, you can see how that didn't go too badly for Hellborn there. Uh, getting back to items, anyway, speaking of Parasite, we got Phase Boots, Ghost Merchers. Um, 
a bottle and a rated teacher again helping out that mana and bottle you know, of course health and mana uh, on torture of Korok we got power supply bottle boots, steam boots port and a couple of marks of the novice we're not going to turn those marks into anything maybe one amulet of exile um, bottle and power supply giving him plenty of ability to heal himself and use his abilities and that's something he sort of needs because he's going to be doing that conquer attempt actually coming out here from the Hellborn side. Of course, uh, they do have the so-called Hellborn advantage. It's been nerfed somewhat now with the addition of the second ramp, but uh, it's still easier for them to take down it. With the Tempest Mains and Flywalk Wards, he's just going down immediately. And uh, Puppet Master looks like there picks up a token, so he is not going to die the first time they kill him. Meanwhile, Tempest jumping Torture puts the stun out. Not going to be enough CC by himself, though. And he's got to back up now because Mage Bane's joined the fight. And he just there's nothing he can do about that. Let's see, his, he does have a haste drain, though. Hex coming out from Polywalk Priest, actually, on Mage Bane. Is a tongue tag? I cannot know. Ultimate from Bubbles coming out. Very nice placement. Storm Spirit on Polywalk Priest. It looks like excellent lockdown on Chu right there. He's going to die. Stor Parasite gets stunned, and he's going to go down. Oh, and he grabs a shiver. Well played. But the Coral's going to slow him down. Uh, meanwhile, Pup Master taking out uh, Korok, and the Shiver is going to allow Parasite to get away. Very nice incest there. Jump from Tempest, stun coming out, bubbles, and he's going to die as well. And so there's some great cleanup right there by the Hellborn team. Didn't even have to pop the token. Took out Mage Bane very quickly, nearly killed Parasite, ended up killing three out of five heroes overall. So strong team fight there. Took Kongor and followed it up by a one team fight, and now that's expanded their gold lead to 10,000, their experience lead to nearly 9,000. And let's see what they've used that additional gold to pick up in terms of items. Of course, Andra's sitting on Strider's Man Battery Glowstone and Word of Sight. Those that glowstone quite a luxury item right there. Possibly going for Staff of the Master. Um, that would make the most sense. Although, that's a very expensive item, and it's unlikely that she'd be able to complete it. I believe it's about uh, 5k. Something like 30, no, less than 30. So. Um, yeah, about 47, uh, 46, 47 in gold. <laughs> very unlikely that she'll actually be able to pick up that unless this game goes quite long. Um, Pump Master, meanwhile, is sitting on an Assassin's Shroud. Good early pickup. Uh, Steam Boots, Mark of the Novice, and a s that stupid 10k strength item. No, this is embarrassing because I have to figure it out. Mighty Blade, there you go. Uh, so probably going to be turning that into a Shrunken Head. Possible Rift Shards, though I find that quite unlikely. He's going to need some survivability, and between Parasite Bubbles and Torturer and Hellbrain for that matter, there's a lot of magic damage coming out. So um, the ability to not get uh, CC down would be very helpful there. And meanwhile, Vitas is going to get killed. Thanks to the ultimate from Tundra. Bubble's throwing a Shell Surf to make them back up, and that's going to do its job. Looks like that's going to be all for this fight. Uh, Tempest is his portal key. Probably had that for a while. Uh, and his Shrunken Head, so we certainly had that for a while. 23 minutes, portal key, and Shrunken Head. Excellent. On the other hand, his ultimate is still not going to matter because of the Hellbringer Malthus that can come out. Bubble's throwing out Shell Surf once more to harass. So, you know, Shrunken Head, good, good pickup. Not sure if it's the best pickup, because to be honest, I don't think that uh, Hellbringer, uh, that uh, Tempest Ultimates really going to matter that much. Ward's coming down from Paula here to take the tower out, but they're getting focused and they're going to go down relatively quickly. Tower's still going to buy half health though. Um, and finally on the Hellborn, uh, sorry, Miss Polywell, um, Bubble, uh, Bottle, Storm Spirit, Power Supply, Mark of Striders, fairly standard items there, looking to pick up a Blink, and probably about 300 gold. Um, Tundra finally already has his Blink, as well as Steam Boots, Mystic Vestments, Stout Shield, a Portal, uh, Homecoming Stone, and a Blood Chalice. So, probably, interesting idea with the Blood Chalice, he doesn't have any natural health regen, and or uh, any health regen in terms of items, and his natural regen is obviously isn't that strong. Um, he is very mana intensive, so that will help him farm, but, you know, it, it's not really going to help his survivability any. Still a fairly strong item. Um, did get nerfed a while back, but it's, it's pretty good. 
got three Legion heroes grouping up here on the bottom. They still have not taken... No, they've taken the middle tower, sorry. But bottom top towers both remain. <laughs> Actually, look at Vita's right now has zero items. So he's just hanging out, being a boss. Just thinking, yeah, I got my hel uh, ultimate. That, that's pretty much it. I guess if I get my death well down too, that'd be helpful. But I'm just looking to ult somebody. Um, the lack of farm on him is, is kind of criminal. Um, only at 74 gold per minute, the lowest farmer on the Hellborn side is Toronto at 210. And Hellborn do have uh, three tier 1 towers taken out compared to Legion's 1, but that, doesn't explain all, that does not explain all the GPM. Uh, Beat is is 0-5-0, while Toronto is 3 9 So certainly a lot more involvement and success in terms of hero killing from Toronto. Uh, the Hellborn are hunting the jungle here, eventually deciding to give up and take out this camp. The token on Puppet Master's only got about a minute 30 left on it, so they're going to have to push now if they want to do anything with it, and that looks like exactly what they're going to do. He does need to be a little careful, though, because I think the Legion team can save this tower and turtle it out until the uh, token expires, so um, he's really going to watch that timer and make sure it doesn't get killed after it expires, because then, of course, he will die for real. Um, Firebrand just picked up on Mage Bane, presumably going for that Frostburn, and then into the Geometer's Bane and Frostwolf Skull. Obviously all strong pickups there. Um, Mage Bane's, uh, of course, does not have any natural CC, so adding slowing attacks is very helpful. Meanwhile, Tempest Image there being spotted and killed. Shipper still providing some vision. Uh, Puppet Master's only got 48 seconds left on that token, so they should might want to back off here. <laughs> nice logger's hatchet kill coming out from Mage Bane. Um, Puppet Master, if he really wants to die, he just needs to get into the tower and just like let it kill him, but that's clearly not what he's willing to do. So this token looks like it's going to expire, although they help one will get this tower one way or the other. Nice deny coming out from Chu. Tempest jump in and stun on Korok, ultimate coming out from Tundra, as well as the Puppet Master ultimate, and he will go down quickly. Three ultimates using one hero, probably not that great. Bubbles ultimate, catching three heroes. Storm Spirit usage on Polywog. Um, Puppeteer's hold coming out of Mage Bane, not letting him do anything. Uh, Yoda on Parasite throws out the Leech on Andromeda just to try to slow his attack, but that's going to be the end of that fight. And the Hellborn team take a tower and kill Korok. It's interesting, three ultimates used by um, the Hellborn team, the uh, Puppet Master, Tundra, and... Shoot, was the last one? I don't remember. Maybe it's just two. Maybe just Puppet Master and Tundra. Uh, but also the jump from Tempest to take out Korok. So a lot of abilities down, and the Legion team did not want to initiate there. I can understand why they would think that. that you know, they want to take this to later game, because Mage Bane's obviously already got the strongest farm in the game at 412 gold per minute. But the Hellborn team has a s very strong 12k gold lead, 8 or 10k experience lead, and an 18 to 4 hero kill advantage. So at some point, the Legion team will need to fight. They can't just keep giving up towers and allow not only Puppet Master but Polywog, Tempest, Tundra, and Andromeda to pick up gold. Andromeda is at 205 gold per minute right now, which is better than every hero on the Legion team except for Mage Bane. And that's just not gonna work. You know, when Andromeda is able to farm better than uh, Parasite, and Korok just picked up his farm right now, but about the same as Torturer, you know, his abilities aren't that useful, but he's not gonna... He's gonna be able to do some damage. He's gonna be able to survive, and he's gonna be able to, to put out some punishment. Uh, Tempest Invisible here, just looking for a good opportunity to open. Looks like they're not gonna do it and back up. But really, it looks like Legion's putting all of their eggs in the Mage Bane basket, and that's not necessarily a bad strategy. Um, if they, if the Hellborn allows him to, he, he can just take off and actually, you know, out carry their entire team. Um, but and he's, he will, he will only need cursory support from his teammates in terms of CC and, and uh, some AOE damage and things like that. On the other hand. 
you know, the Hellborn team has showed they have enough lockdown to kill Mage Bane. They've got Tundra, they've got Tempest, they've got Andromeda, they've got Puppet Master. Puppet Master in particular has two strong stables and it is a very strong Mage Bane counter. Uh, so, you know, they can't really rely on his ability to solely win the game because a lot of his ability to do that it relies on mobility. You know, he can he just doesn't die because of Blink, but with all the uh, lockdown of the Hellborn team, he can die despite Blink. Um, so they, I think they really need to be uh, grouping up here, pushing some towers. There's two tier one towers still up at 30 minutes in the game. When you have a torture on your team, you got to be a little more aggressive than that. You know, torture's impalement just does massive damage to towers, takes them down incredibly quickly. And of course, Hellborn has strong defense, but they're tier 1 towers, it's 30 minutes into the game, you should be able to take them down. Particularly between uh, ta Torture and the Hellbringer, of course the Hellbringer ultimate can be used defensively, offensively, whatever. Just gotta, you gotta kill, get some tower kills, gotta cut into that Goldie a little bit and they're not doing that. I mean as we just saw, the Hellborn are actually farming the Legion Dungle, that's, that's how much ability they have to be aggressive right now, and that's taking even more farm away from the, the Legion side, and they the do take out that top tower, so well done, Chu. Meanwhile, the Hellborn are finishing off Gongor. So, that's uh, a trade, not sure it's a good one. Obviously, you can only take out a tower once, so, you know, that's uh, well played on the Legion side, uh, getting something, but Gongor can just keep dying, so... Uh, in that sense, the Hellborn farmed a renewable resource, and the Legion did not. <laughs> it's, you know, I, I always wonder about that kind of thing, you know, trading hero kills for towers, that kind of thing. It seems like a good idea, because of all the gold you get, and there's a the tower kill. Um, not only for you, but for your teammates. On the other hand, heroes respawn, so you can just keep killing them over and over again. There's only a finite number of towers you can kill to get gold. And obviously, in the end, you know, you get, you definitely get more gold from hero kills than from uh, tower kills in a game that runs more than maybe three minutes and has a fair bit of action. Uh, in any case, Polywog porting up here to farm these creeps. Andrew is joining him. We have some massive gold pulled up here on the Hellborn side. 3,500 on Polywog Priest and 4k on Tempest and 2,200 on Tundra. Now, like I said in game one, Tempest needs to spend that gold. Te he can use those for buybacks, but it's really kind of pointless. Once Tempest ultimates, then uh, that's kind of it. You know, he's done his job. He doesn't really need to do anything else. So, why do you need to save that much gold when buying back doesn't really help you? Unless you get killed before you can ultimate, and then coming back in with the ultimate might help, I suppose, but you still don't need 4k for that. The and, um, oh, there you go, the second tier 1 tower going down, Ultra Tundra throwing out his ultimate, kind of pointless because it's not going to kill Mage Bane, just not enough backup right there. Yeah, Captain Master and Tempest were coming in, but they weren't going to be able to... Oh, nice swap coming out from <laughs> Andromeda, uh, thanks to the Shiver Sight, going to take out Hellbringer, who still has zero items which is, at this point, kind of fascinating. 84 gold per minute, he's got nothing. I just... Nothing, nothing on the courier, I don't know what that's about, but... I get that his GPM is low, but no. You gotta have some items, man. Um, any case... Uh, Tempest, I think, really needs to buy something. I would like to see Restoration Stone, because that ultimate, once again, gets cancelled by Hellbringer, but then you just bring it right back and use it anyway. And obviously, with, uh, he's got wards now, with Beta's not having items, he's probably not too far along in terms of his Restoration Stone, so it's unlikely the second ultimate will get cancelled. Uh, and of course, you know, the Shrunken Head stays there through the ultimate, so you can still pop it, and have it shrunken for the second ultimate. And now 4400 gold pulled up on Mage Bane. He's probably going to split his Frostburn very soon. Um, but yeah, he's another guy who needs to be buying his items. I'm thinking he's obviously saving for buybacks because if he gets taken out, then the Hellborn will look to push in because he is the source of pretty much all of their damage. 
and he's going to need to buy back in order to prevent them from just winning the game right there. We do see some group up here in the middle lane. Uh, Puppet Master, Andromeda, and Polyweb Priest looking to push some stuff in. And there's Chu getting sheep sticked, and he is, is probably going to kill him. Swap coming out there. Still got the stun, the ultimate, a nice Storm Spirit usage. Parasites jumps onto Polyweb, but he Storm Spirits himself. And now nothing is going to happen. As he kicks off the creep, Puppet Master trying to get him out of there, and that will be successful. Looks like Yoda coming in with stun, and and the Puppeteer's Hole comes up, and that's gonna kill Parasite. Unless, no. Oh, there's the ultimate coming out from Tundra, and that's gonna kill Parasite. Korok's gonna get swapped in now here, taking that disable with Parasite, which is down as well. Ball was running at the Shell Surf to harass, but that's two, two heroes getting picked off by four of the Legion. They didn't even have Tempest, who was out farming top. And it looks like they're going to look to push this in now. Polywog Wards are up, and he's going to drop them now. There they are. Sheep coming out onto Chu, and is he going to get locked down enough? No. Uh, Hellbringer Ultimate coming out. It's going to just straight up kill Polywog Priest, so pretty funny kill there from Beatus, who's now going to take out the Polywog Wards with them and with the help of Chu. And meanwhile, Puppet Master can get jumped on by Chu, who pops his Assassin Shroud, and he's going to be fine. So, successful tower defense here from the Legion side. And... I think that might have been the first time we've seen Malphus. Uh, meanwhile, Tempest pushing in the top tower, and this might go down. No, they're going to keep cleaning up the Tempest minions. Uh, Whispering Helm just finished on top of Master, and with that, let's keep going. And oh my god, Andromeda picked up a staff from Master. That's kind of shocking. 36 minutes in, 216 gold permitted on Andromeda. You just don't see that. So that's very well played from Toronto. Getting that Staff of the Master reduces his uh, ultimate cooldown. At level uh, 3, the ultimate cooldown, I believe, is 10 seconds. So he's just going to be swapping people like mad. And at this rate, he may be grabbing a Blink Dagger or something like that too, just, just for the fun of it. I, I, actually, farming neutrals here again. Something else super up. Puppet Master, in the meantime, has picked up the Whispering Helm, in addition to the Shrunken Head and the Assassin's Shroud. He's still got a token of life from that second Concord kill they picked up. But that's probably going to expire soon. Yeah, in fact, 37 seconds. Uh, Pollock Priest has finished the Hex Stick, so those are the uh, sheeps that were coming out earlier, as well as the Storm Spirit, so he's got two CC items now. Uh, as well as one on Tempest, so apparently there was not a CC limit for this. Thing, and uh, yeah, it's the NSL, NASL, so of course it wasn't. Um, so, Sheepstick and Storm Spirit, as well as Power Supply and Strider, so he's he's hexed up right there. He's got his own hex, as well as Tongue Hide, as well as Storm Spirit, as well as Sheep. Uh, so he's going to be able to CC four heroes at the same time, if he pops everything really quickly, because that would be hilarious. Tempest, in the meanwhile, did spend his gold on a Sheepstick, and that's a perfectly good choice. Of course, with that Blank Dagger, he can get in and Sheep somebody, and uh, they're looking to get as much lockdown as they possibly can on Mage Bane, because they don't want him to be able to Blink away. Uh, speaking of which, a Shrunken Head picked on a Mage Bane, which is an excellent decision, because of all of the CC that's coming out on the Hellborn team, now they're going to be able to uh, completely prevent that from locking him down, and he's going to be able to live now because of Blink. Uh, going back to the Hellborn side, last one is Tundra, who's finished a puzzle box, as we saw in that last push on Middle Tower, and that's going to add to his uh, unit number of units he can control. Of course, he's got the Shiver and the Coral, and now yeah, the puzzle box smaller, and the minion. Um, as well as mixed vestments and a portal key, which we saw earlier, back on the Hellborn the side, Beat is got the boots. Tower. Oh yeah, the dude is awesome. He's got boots only 39 minutes in. That is pro. <laughs> in all seriousness, he's just been bored this whole game. Had no farm, died six times, only got one kill. 93 gold per minute, really won't do too much for you. Uh, of course, Chu on Mage Bane, massively geared up. 512 gold per minute. Now he's just finished his Geometer's Bane. So he has an insane amount of uh, both survivability and damage between the um, you know, what is it, three, uh, 
finished items he's got, and he's probably going to have a frost wolf relatively soon because of that massive GPN, uh, GPM. Uh, Bubbles, as he's shooting on Bubbles, is looking at his Storm Spirit, Steam Boots, we're going to teach her bottle, and Mana Battery. So, uh, once again, most of the items he had earlier, he has just picked up a Storm Spirit in addition. Of course, at 207 gold per minute, he's not going to be able to farm very quickly. Same thing with Parasite, he's picked up a Puzzle Box to counter Tundras. Um, but that's pretty much it. Meanwhile, Torturer's picked up a Void Talisman, as well as an Ultimate Orb, presumably going for a Sheep Stick of his own. Um, but I don't think that's going to be finished anytime soon. He's only got 220 GPM. And the Void Talisman, I don't think, is a very good idea. Um, Tundra's Ultimate, Polywog's Jolt, uh, Puppet Master's... Nothing, actually. Uh, Andro's Stun. I got a fair bit of magic damage coming out on the uh, Hellborn side, and in particular, just a ton of CC. So they can just CC him down until the Void Talisman wears off, and they can hit him physically again. Um, you know, I guess some of the... The Polyglot Wars and the Puppet Master auto attacks are physical, so there's some logic there, but not enough in my opinion. Uh, initiation here from Bubbles, Parasite jumping onto uh, Polyglot Priest, but gonna get hexed after that. Bubbles Ultimate coming out on Tundra only, Ultimate on Page Bane, uh, Puppet Master Ultimate coming out on Torture, and he's gonna not go down, but uh, Parasite and Yodan Parasite gonna get taken out. Uh, Chu is actually going to kill Tundra. Ended a champion in Streak there. Very strong. Gold pickup. Tempest going to blink here, back in here, get the sun out of Torture. Storch going to get pushed, ticked away, but actually Mage Man going to come here, swap for Andromeda, and saving Tempest, then you have to his ultimate comes out, and Tempest dies as well as Chu. Lockdown going to come out here, but Storm Spirit uses on him, ending the Tonic Tide from Polylog Priest, and Andromeda going to homecoming sun away. Purple Master is running away, but he's screwed. Um, so, nice cleanup there from Chu. Uh, using the Shrunken Head to great advantage there, preventing him from getting CC'd down. And that's gonna basically, like we saw, allow him to move around like crazy. Now he's gonna try to solo Kongor, which is not going to work because he doesn't have any life stealing, he's already fairly low. Um, but that was really, yeah, one team fight, fight from the uh, Legion side. They got a uh, kill on Chu, they picked off the Puppet Master, and, as well as the Tundra. <laughs> and meanwhile, Bubbles gets taken out by Polywog Priest. Attempted Shell Surf away, but probably got CC'd down. They've got plenty of CC between Polywog and Tempest, and actually Andro with a swap and a stun. So, this isn't looking, after that team fight, this isn't looking as... Um, bad for Legion team as it did maybe five minutes ago. Um, despite the 15k gold lead and the 16k experience lead, they have that Chew. He's level 23. He is just going to be able to absolutely dominate. Now the big question is the Shrunken Head. Every time he uses it, the cooldown lowers, but so does the charge, and they're going to jump on Parasite here, so often stun coming out from Andro and Tempest, and he's going to go down. Mage Bane here, it looks like he can lock down through the Shrunken Head, of course. Tundra's ultimate, Superior Magic. Bubble is supporting in here. Good out Pops' ultimate. Tem uh, Torture also throwing a stun down and lots of stuff. And Mage Bane just lives so long. Gonna kill Andromeda here. And Storm Spirit from Tundra and Tight Cover from Bubbles just allows him to almost live. Meanwhile, Chu. Puppet Master's uh, chasing down Tempest, but yeah, the Torture. There's a Void Tiles in front of his attack, but then CC, and he's gonna die now. War Trap coming out here on the Chu, and he's gonna get tongue tied and kill. And that is a problem. He needs to buy back, I think. Beat is actually nearly dying to creeps. Wow. But the Hellmorn are gonna take Congor here as long as Thunder doesn't die. Wow, that was close. Tongue tied coming out from Polly, and that's gonna kill him. So, uh, Hellborn will pick up a token here, probably go on Puppet Master once again. Nope, actually, Tempest and Polywog Priest got the, uh, Bananas and Token, respectively, that was the third Congor kill, so they will be Bananas coming out on this one. And now Void Talisman to match Koroks coming out on Tundra. And that makes plenty of sense, although there is... Uh, magic damage coming out from Bubbles, Parasite, and Torturer. Um, pretty much all of the damage on Legion is physical from that Mage Bane. Uh, those three heroes don't live long enough to do much of anything. Um, and in particular, that'll help 
uh, the PK from Tundra, so if Mage Bane can't hit him, then he can blink away and probably live. Uh, middle push coming out here, Tundra blinks in and jumps on Parasite, he's gonna go down. Parasite really not doing much of anything this game, 0-6-2, and, and there's gonna be a Rax kill right here. Mage Bane back soon, but the swap coming out of Korok and he's gonna die. So Mage Bane's back up, but the Rax are gonna get taken out here, as well as the ranged Rax. Of course, um, Token and Banana is still up, so they're not super concerned. Looks like they might swing top, try to take out a tower there, and... Nope, just gonna run on bubbles here, swap coming out there, and the Puppet and Thiebup is gonna kill him. Excellent! Tempest Ultimate here, immediately cancelled by the Hellbringer ult, and that's gonna save Mage Bane, who's actually gonna take on Andromeda. Uh, in the meantime, the... Uh, sorry, the bubbles that was earlier. Puppeteer's hole coming out of Mage Bane, so he can't chase. Polywall getting a little brave here. Sheep's still coming out on him, and there's a ward trap, and there's a sun coming out there, and Polywog's getting high actually here to the uh, aura from Mage Bane, I believe, but also he, he's also going to go down. Pop, of course, had the Polywog had the token, and Parasite said as well. Mage Bane immediately buying back, because really he has to. But it's worth noting he does not have another buyback. If they if they kill him, <laughs> actually he takes he takes the Tundra immediately with the ultimate. I was going to farm the wards. So they're gonna uh, stave off this push. I would Im imagine that Tundra had no mana and popped the Void Talisman, so he had increased magic damage and Mage Bane just wrecked him with it. But um, Chu probably doesn't have enough money for a buyback at this point. Um, he does have one left. He can buy back one more time, but uh, he does not have sufficient funds, although he might now. And he certainly will soon. But uh, 45 minutes in this game now, we got a 27k gold lead and a 33k experience lead for the Hellborn team, and they've really shown the ability to kill the Mage Main, and that's all they need to do. The rest of the Legion team is doing nothing. I mean, not not to be insulting or anything, they're obviously very good players, but they just there's no damage. Particularly Parasite is 0-7-3, and, and he's you know got his doesn't even have his level three ult. Um, doesn't have any items except the puzzle box. Uh, so he, he can do about 500 magic damage burst and pop his puzzle minions, but he doesn't take much damage before dying, and he can't do much damage besides that burst. And 500 magic damage at 47 minutes of the game is not a hill we lot. Um, particularly considering there's two shrunken heads and um, a Mystic Vestments on the uh, Hellborn team. Who are now looking to group up and push top. Um, Bananas were used at some point on Tempest, so he doesn't have those anymore. Um, as I was saying, the, the you know, Legion team, Bubbles, has got some burst damage with his magic stuff, and uh, Torturer actually has less damage because he's just not surviving, and he needs to do that in order for his Impalement and his Ultimate to go off. Swap coming out here, and Sheep coming out here on tor Torturer, and we'll see how quickly he goes down without doing much. He's relatively squishy, and just doesn't need a lot of damage. So, uh, Hellborn team continue to be aggressive here. They're pushing in middle, swap out coming out on B is, and that's just gonna kill him, because he's got nothing. And Rama is gonna pay for it with her life, though. Uh, Parasite actually taking her out. Bubbles ultimate coming out on the two heroes. Probably while wards go down. There's the Tempest ultimate without any superior magic damage cancelment from Hellborn, uh, from Hellbringer. It's gonna kill Polywalk, and there's a Tongue Tide coming out on Bubbles, that's gonna kill him. Parasite's uh, bot back, sheeps are coming out on him, but that's gonna kill him. And actually, Tempest get a second Restoration Stone, and that's gonna uh, lock down Chu, and he's nearly gonna die. No, Pops is trying to run and get out. <laughs> so, excellent Restoration Stone coming out from Tundra, and that's gonna happen in the game as they realize they cannot win anymore. Um, despite the massive amount of farm on, on Mage Bane, this is a team game. It's a 5 on 5, not a 1 on 1. So, uh, unfortunately for EZ, not going to be able to take out much, although <laughs> Chu staying in the game, killing uh, Ja on Tundra. I, I guess he just, he needs to feel special, you know, after, after how well he played, and he did play very well, but his team was just unable to do anything. Uh, so very well played from Hellborn, and just a massive golden experience lead, and really 
team ability push them through this. As you can see, two heroes above 400 gold per minute and four above 300 gold per minute. Andromeda lagged behind at 198. But again, that was higher than everybody on the Legion side except for Chu. And, you know, it just comes down to a point where one hero the can't do enough damage. And possibly he could have if they were more locked down on the Legion team, the if there were more CCs of stuns. But obviously there weren't, and you know he, he just the ended up getting destroyed, a Legion tower. destroyed because of all the CC on the Hellborn team. So again, very good victory going the to uh, a Legion Complexity has been Gaming, a Legion and has been that's it. Thanks for being with me.